my bag time again let's see what's in these packages don't forget the links down below for things i'll give you links for as always i purchased a few different metal caps recently for like bnc connectors and triax connectors and stuff like that i saw these ones at the same time now this is supposed to be for ink connectors probably a person and pl2 food online there you go it's pl259 we'll go on that one right little dust caps i think i've got an ink connector here somewhere too there you go there's an in type i believe it fits on that too it does pl259 in of the same outer size so yeah so you've got an ink connector like on your special analyzer or something like that some other device where you have ink connectors you can get these little metal covers that go on certainly better than those plastic ones and you find the jews as well that because they're metal they also provide shielding so if you've got sensitive inputs and stuff like that that's an option it's also got this ring here so you can put that around the connector and that way you just has it hanging off when you take it off so you don't lose it i thought it was quite nice so i've got four five of those four of those i can't count i've got four of those they seem fine could be useful check the links out down below for those okay batteries batteries right i've been waiting for these for a project so i did a conversion on a farm tech timer I think i've done a video about it before i've done a couple of these things now and one of them one of the people which owns one got hold of me and said look i'm not happy with the battery it's not working right it's it's not behaving like it should it's not you know it's dying after like a week it's like but that's definitely not right you know just in storage just to sit in there so it's like yeah okay something's definitely wrong so i sent it back to me and i found sure enough the battery one of the battery batteries in the pack had leaked and it obviously failed it's like well these are new batteries obviously the quality wasn't that good and those were like um nickel metal hydride type batteries so i decided to get this type instead i can actually use two of these packs inside the unit and i'll tell you what i'm talking about this right here so it's this unit here and basically um, i had a pack sitting here which was um, five cells, I can't remember exactly now, nickel metal hydrides, and they just weren't working right. Yeah, I'm gonna replace it with two of these. Now, these actually have little modules on them as well, so little BMS modules built into the cells. So I don't actually know if I need to worry about putting an external pack on. In fact, they've got built-in modules, that means I probably don't need to put external BMS on. And so all of those mount these in here, stick them in serious, wire them up to the original wiring I've got in here, and, um, that should be good again nice and simple but yeah i'm just disappointed that the person i did this for obviously they didn't get the result that i wanted them to get which is to have a device which would work well for them for a period of time it didn't last now i've done another one of these with exactly the same setup with the same batteries i don't know if that one is still okay <laughs> but if it's not i've got two more just in case that one gets sent back to Right, I've shown these before. These little handheld magnifiers. Let me in. So I gave these to the guys at work and they thought they were good and they've used them. The only problem is one of them has already failed. <laughs> Your torture on it has already died. These weren't very expensive. I don't know if it's been like mishandled or whatever, but this one's working fine. The um it doesn't feel like it's clicking properly, so I think the switch on it's failed or something inside, so I've got a couple more. I suppose I should check them both, shouldn't I? Make sure they both work. They like them, they said they're really good for the job they, um, that they're trying to use them for. So, um, you know, you can obviously get different brands probably, but I thought I'd try one more time with these ones. That one's working. I'll give a replacement to one of the guys so we had this one fail. Seems a bit thin, I'm not sure what's in this thing. I know what this is. I can get into the packet without damaging it. It's a screen protector film. In fact, there's two of them. So I actually got this from my Keyfleet 7510 DMM, which I've got recently. And I've featured in a couple of videos already. But it's got this screen protector on there, which is a bit old, I suppose. 
and I thought oh, if I can just get like a new one so I've got two you know always need a spare <laughs> let's just check let me just offer it up see if it fits it should kind of yes okay that's right so the closest size I could get is actually slightly too big I'll sort of cut the end of it off but the height is really good so basically what I do is just, no, I'll probably cut off you know a little bit of this end at least it's got the lines on it which is useful so you can just cut it down the line and then it will fit my screen I can replace that protector with one of these I'll be links down below for these these will probably fit the uh, DMM6500 and what have you it'll probably fit those two same screen I think so um, yeah might be useful to you if you've got one of those and you want a better screen protector on it TPMS, uh, right, excellent, actually even even better, even better, oh cool, it came with some batteries as well, <laughs> that's annoying, I just bought some batteries, <laughs> I think they're spares, I just bought some exact batteries for another one, this is USB and solar powered, so I think like USB power initially you get charged up and get it going, and um, you know, to the display here, let's actually plug it in, USB-C, I've got a USB-C cable here, let's plug this in, Turn it on, I guess. There we go. So it's prompting to set it up. I should probably read the manual and stuff. So it's got a four readout for each tyre. And the idea is at least to give you some kind of peace of mind about what's going on with your wheels. So, nice. Um, I think I need to program this somehow. I'm going to read the manual and figure out how to do that. But uh, yeah, this was actually surprisingly cheap. Now the last TPMS I bought was for the bus, for the motorhome, which has got six wheels. At the time we also had a trailer, so we had eight wheels to monitor. And I think I spent about $700 on that unit. It still works. I have to like replace the batteries once a year on each wheel, basically. That's about how long they last. Now I've had a very similar system using the very similar sensors to these. Uh, I'll get one out. Yeah, here's one, which I've now dropped on the floor and lost. Let's get another one out. Yeah, not exactly the same, but they're very similar. And the battery on that has lasted literally three or four years. Original batteries, and I think and now it's getting to the point where I need to replace it. So the battery goes in here, you basically you lock that up, you get like, there's a little spanner in there you can put on there, you can put a little spanner on that, you can turn the top and unscrew it, and then you just little, one of these little coin silver batteries goes in there. And in that unit, They've lasted, say, three or four years, and I've been like really impressed how long they've lasted for such a small battery. It's been incredible. I'm really surprised. Compared to the other unit, which have got bigger batteries, and they last about a year. So I'm constantly replacing batteries all the time in that thing. So yeah, my wife had a, um, a flat tyre the other day on her car. She didn't actually notice it, and she just parked up. I don't know if she saw the tyre was a bit low with her friend did, who she was with at the time. They sent me a picture saying, hey, does this look right to you? And no. It's okay. It's only flat on the bottom. The top's okay. Um, anyway, so no, it's now it's on. It's running off a bit internal battery. I'm talking about my wife. That's probably her now. Yes, it was my wife. Anyway, so she had this issue where the tire was flat again, only on the bottom. So the uh, I thought I better get her a TPMS for that car because she's got a relatively new car as well. It's only a couple of years old. And unfortunately, that wasn't an option that she'd specified on the car when she got it. She bought like the lowest. And now she keeps on texting me. Anyway, she bought the lowest spec one because she's, you know, she's getting the cheaper, you know, brand new car. She didn't want to spend too much money. So she didn't get TPMS built into the car. Although it could come with it, it was an option. So I got one of these and I'll add that onto the car. And the reason I'm saying it's good, it's arrived now. She's not here. And just taking one of the other vehicles. So I can go out there, fit this to her car, set it all up, and she'll get a surprise when she goes to use it next time. This is why she texted me. She saw these in a junk shop. Interesting. Um, what's it say here? 6100 receiver so I told her interesting but no thanks I don't have a use for those things but she just keeps sending me pictures now I'll let you know if I find something decent
Innovation Electronics, a white tool, a white tool, a white oh, right. right. This I think I mentioned in the last mailbag as a way of fixing my iPhone 13 screen. There's programmers you can get. And this, there's a power supply that goes with it. There's an adapter board thing. This one here. I bought a few different things. What's this one here? Yeah, I'll do this around. You've got displays and touch. So I need this one here, 13 and mini. So that connect to there. So I believe I can use this to actually read the existing display, program it back onto a new display, maybe without having to transfer the chip. But I believe you only do this a limited number of times for the actual chip fail. So there's a risk there that you do it once and it breaks. So yeah. I've got this other board. There's a whole bunch of boards you can get for this thing to go with it. There's loads of different options. Lattice activation module. I think that's like the face scan thing. So it does all these different models as well. Again, I've got a 13, so yep. Takes power input there as well to run it. And that's what's on the back. Conformally coated, nice. And here is the actual programmer. As I said in the previous mailbag, I don't actually know much about this, only from what I've seen in a couple of videos. So naturally I'm an expert now. But you can use this programmer to do this. And let's get the thing out of the box so you can see it. Some Chinese instructions, that's useful. Programmer, there's a USB cable in there, and there's the actual programmer. So you get one of those modules, you plug it in the side here, and um, you power it from USB-C and then it gives you options for doing different things. You can read a device and then write back to another one. So you plug in the original screen, you do a read from that, should be able to read the original chip, get that data in here, plug in the new screen, do a write, and it should write that data to that screen. In theory, you can also use it for other things as well, not just screens, you can also do it for other stuff too. So yeah, that's just that one option. I've seen a couple of videos on this thing and it looks interesting and I I thought I'd give it a go. Um, when I had the accident a couple of weeks ago, which I think I mentioned before, um, maybe not in this video, but I landed on the phone. So I basically I fell over, I was actually in my motorhome, fell out of my motorhome, landed on my side and landed on the phone and broke the phone holder, like some sort of belt clip thing which I've shown in the previous mailbag, broke the holder and bent the phone. The phone is now slightly bent and you sort of crack right across the screen, which is why I'm getting all this stuff because I don't have anything for an iPhone 13 screen replacement. I've now got the screens, they arrived in the last mail bag, I've now got a programmer. Um, so I've got two different ways of doing this. I can transfer the chip from the original screen onto one of the new screens. It's got an adapter system set up for that. Or I can try programming it, I'll read the old screen, put it onto the new screen and see if that will work. I will try that first. Yeah, we'll see how we go with that. I've never broken a phone screen before, ever. All these years of having a smartphone, I've never broken a screen until a few weeks ago. <laughs> so that was really disappointing. Not only did I break myself, I also broke the screen. Last package for today. Actually, before I move on, if you've ever used one of these programmers, let me know how you found it. Like in the comments down below there, let me know. Like this particular one, this AY A108 version. If you've used that before, tell me in the comments down below. I'd like to hear your feedback about how you found it. Any drawbacks you may have found or any things that got to watch out for. It'd be really useful. And here's another programmer, because you know I like to keep my options open. <laughs> Put impeccable timing. So this is a Vice programmer, the V1SE, as it calls it here. Um, similar sort of thing. It's got a board here for the displays. Again, you can get all different options for these things. So those are the interface connectors that plug into this unit. And then this side here, we've got the display connectors. Yeah, to be honest, you can see it better. Right, it's 12, so you've got 13, 14, 15, stuff. So, again, for doing the display reading, I thought I was get a different option, so I've got different ones to try. I mean, if one doesn't work, maybe the other one will. Maybe one's better than the other, I don't know. So let's open this box up and have a quick look at this one. Oh, 
also comes with a module it's pre-installed it's got pull which is backwards that's fine <laughs> hmm. it's got a USB A connector there and USB C there what module is already installed on it let's have a look display and touch as well so these are touch sensors so it's 7 and 8 up to the 11 and it's also got the vibrators for the X and the 8 as well so I don't have any of these phones so those don't matter to me but that's just what it comes with as default what else is in here another USB cable that's fine and some software you can download for it and whatever you so that's good happy with that I'm not sure which one's better if you know if you used either of these devices or ideally both of these devices let me know in the comments are they any good or not subscribe over there if you're not already subscribed and want to see more stuff maybe i'll do a video about the phone screen replacement who knows patreon support link over there if you want to help support me on patreon and there's other videos to watch down below there if this interests you or my repair videos might interest you see you later